Okay, so good morning from Phnom Penh, everyone. If everyone can hear me, could you just uh, give a thumbs up on chat? Good. Yeah, perfect. Thank you so much, uh, first of all, for spending your time to join us at Global Cambodian Scholars uh, first webinar today in collaboration with Energy Lab Asia. Uh, Mopokon is here, so thank you so much. And I'd like to start by introducing myself, the team at Cambodian Scholars, uh, and uh, the network we're building. So my name is Niet. I am one of the co-founders of Global Cambodian Scholars. And in fact, there's another uh, co-founder here today, Bong Ai, also a panelist today. And um, so yes, GCS, or Global Cambodian Scholars, is founded on the mission to connect and empower Cambodian scholars across the globe. We focus on opportunities that build leadership capabilities, support creativity, provide career advancement opportunities and encourage the acts of giving back essentially. So far we've run events such as, you know, uh, scholar series, scholarship Q and A's, research spotlights, and in the next few years, we want to build, to work to build and establish conferences abroad and in Cambodia uh, to bring scholars together for impactful discussions, as well as connect them to the industries. So I'm, I'm very proud to say that uh, global Cambodian scholars have grown to support scholars member from across four continents in over eight countries, including and not limited to uh, Korea and China, which by the way, the associations are joining us as well today, very exciting. Thailand, the US, Canada, the Netherlands, France, and we look forward to engaging many more countries. So if you're interested to become our member or getting involved, please do visit our website and uh, we'll look forward to hear from you. With that said, um, I'd like to share a little as well on, uh, sorry, a minute, second, just really quickly, share a little on our uh, members and uh, where we are. So as you can see, our members are entrepreneurs, academics, and innovators across uh, the globe. So we have people from AUBP, Brown University, Stanford, uh, McGill, Monash, and we hopefully look forward to getting in touch with you wherever you are in the world as Cambodian scholar. With that said, I'd like to hand this floor to Mong Pakun from Energy Lab Asia to do her introduction. And thank you once again, Energy Lab, for partnering with us today. Can you hear me so well? Uh, hello, everyone. Uh, thank you so much for joining uh, us today to come and learn more about clean energy. Uh, my name is Pakun, as uh, Neet introduced uh, earlier. And I work at Energy Lab. Uh, I'll tell myself a little bit more along the way. But first, before we start, I'd like to thank our uh, founding sponsors, uh, Australian Embassy and UNDP in Cambodia, as well as our co-funded sponsors, uh, uh, EU Switch Asia Program under Switch to Solar, uh, Henrich Wall Siphons in Cambodia, Oxfam, as well as NUV. Uh, so what is Clean Energy Week, you might ask. Uh, Clean Energy Week is our annual uh, festival and it's about celebrating clean energy in Cambodia, uh, which it brings uh, more jobs, more investments, uh, sustainable economic growth, uh, uh, lower electricity costs, as well as um, uh, uh, help Cambodia to be more energy independent. Uh, so this year we have, we proudly announced that we have more than 30 uh, events ranging topics and style. It's a little bit different from last year due to the COVID-19. Some, so some of the events have moved to online and some of the big events uh, have moved and postponed uh, until uh, said, uh, this 17 December. Uh, so um, I encourage all of you to check it out if you in, present in Cambodia. Uh, uh, check those events out and, and, and check us at energylab.asia or Clean Energy Week specifically for all these events that you're interested. Uh, so uh, after I'd like to share you this video, uh, some of you might have seen already, but I want us to watch it together and learn more about uh, energy. So Niet, if you can help me to... Thank you. Can you see my screen now? Yes. No sorry, no. one second. Okay. Let me double check, sorry, technical issues. All right. So let me share my screen again. Uh, one, there we go. It should be able to work now. Yeah.
ถ้ามอปสอาตรบานก่อสร้างขนมเบอร์มวยดอเลื่อนจึงเป็นนานาตึกอ้อนในขนมไปพบโลกนี่มันเหม็นคือเรื่องได้กลัวพยายามเอาหนุ่มเตะปีโปรทายดำไลน์ในทามอปสอาตกำปองตัดแหลกจ่อให้เป็นอยู่กันกำปองจะสมหวังเคยเนื้ออากาศละอ่อนละอ่อนได้ทามอปสอาตกำปองแต่ประดอลอ่อนให้นี้ยื่นมันต้องมารับมันโจนเอาพอไปแบบเซ็งเซ็งในอันตรเนี่ยโปเซอร์พองได้เบี้ยกำปองเธออาบิพบลงบ่อเฮียงก็ได้จริงหมดเธออายกรุธรรมจิตกันตัดคนทั่วเธออาบิบะนงการทวการสแกมเธออาบิบะนงการทวดำเนาเนื่องเธออาบิบะนงการโดนเนื้อบ่อปุจิจุนนงเปปัจจุบันยื่นดังไฮท่าท่ามอปสอาตกึ่งมันละอ่อนกระจอหนุ่มเตะตัวท่าเรียกตัดมันจะแต่จางจางกรุเปลให้กระจอก็แบบบ่อละหดกรุเปลได้คนตายประเทศกัมพูชาสุดขนมจมหอมมวยดอลล์ออปสานขนมดำน้ำสายปัญญาหาประชุมแต่งอ่อนนี่ยังมีตุ่มนกเบรียกิสนีทอมทอมจิจานแต่อาจได้ตัวเจียกุยดำไม่ประดอลทำมาปอดอตีกรงดอกบ่อเยอะเนื้อเป็ดดำมันเหม็นประตูเปรียตต์นั่งชอบบ่อแล้วเป็นนิตติดสับไงนี้ยังก็มีประเทศกัมพูชาเซ็งเซ็งแต่อาจช่วยเยอะอายุชนะเลือกปัญหาแต่งอ่อนนี่อุติหออปกรณ์จีอกุยกงเตอร์ฉลาดไว้อปกรณ์กรุกรงเปจุ่มไงนั่งยืนอยู่ในกิสนี Pro sân bây giờ trao trả ở bậc cao đẳng ở ní, dương nâng miền cao phút cao cái sân đi đại đồng môn trường môn, đại phu ở dương miền sầm mặt tập hiệp không gặp bậc đo tham bậc đo bậc đại cam bồ chia đẳng mù, đa mình bằng phải lời bậc đẹp xem xem tiền. Bất chấp bọn bậc đại cam bồ chia bàn nâng cầm bông tại bằng cát panaka, xem lại bản nhạc này tham bậc đo bậc xuân phong đại, co bận tai, rồi hôn bậc đo bên ní panaka bậc dương nâng mình toàn bài ăn uất tam nâng ní ca bậc bảo bị phục lùng tại môn nội tề. ยังนามันยื่นเนื้อแต่มีสังคมพันธการไอ้ปลาโดบ้านหายยื่นก็มีสมบัติเพียบขนมกาเทอร์ไว้ได้ยื่นตบกระทายยื่นเหมือนไอ้เทอร์บ้านกาปิชนามปีปอนบุ้นบันไดกิสนีปฏิกรรมปุจิเอตรบ้านครบดันดับได้อันตรเนี่ยโฟเซลปนท้ายเวียตบ้านปลาโดแตงสร้องเนื้อชนามปีปอนดับบุ้นเนื้อขนมชนามปีปอนดับบุ้นมุ้ยปฏิเวียนน้ำขมิ้นปุ่นหรือปลาตัดโตแต่สาปนท้ายเนื้อเป็ดกันได้ชนามปีปอนมาเผยปุ๊กเก็บบ้านดำล้างทำมุปโปปุ่นหรือปลาตัดรอโฮตัดดับปรามจีกวัดโปรตีนกัมพูชีมีอากาศดอดทอมเทนีเปปัจจุบันนี้ยื่นไอ้ดำหลังทามโปโซลาหนึ่งทามโปชอว์การแต่จราบบงการการตกทามโปไอ้การแต่จราบหนึ่งทวายบันไดบันจุนอากิสเนียดบอกยื่นการแต่จราบไว้เวียนนกมันเนื้อการเงี่ยหล่อหล่อหนึ่งทำไมทำไมจะจราบจอดบอกยื่นหนึ่งสะอาดจึงมันบอกยื่นสมัยเมื่อแท้อากิสเนียดบอกโปรตีนกัมพูชีมันเงี่ยดังเวียนการแต่ละอ้อสำหรับสกปรกเพียบให้ดำไลการแต่ทักจึงมันตอนนี้จ้องมาในวัยสมรรถอนาคตประเทศกัมพูชีจูรุมจมูกเยอะในสัปดาห์ทำมาโปสอาดหนึ่งสวันอยู่บนแทมตามแก่หาตำบลบ่อเยอะ So I hope you enjoyed the video where we're developing clean energy in Cambodia, and I hope the video got you interested in this topics as I go and then present about this webinar. So I like to share my screen up again. Spare me for a second. Yeah. Okay. Uh, so as you all know, this webinar is about exploring uh, opportunity of opportunity of clean energy in Cambodia. And it's been deliver our energy lab team, and today I'll be your presenter. And so, yeah, welcome everyone. So, um, a little bit about myself. Uh, uh, I'm a clean energy advocate in, at Energy Lab, and I'm also a Shikan scholar. Uh, some of you might already know what Shikan scholar is, and I have graduated as an engineering study by grants at Lafayette. So, it's, uh, if you ask me what is engineering study, it's an interdisciplinary between technology, public policy, and human tendency design. So, it's kind of broader knowledge. But um, I discovered sustainability and community development when I was in college. And I was really passionate. I'm also excited to present you uh, this topic as well today. So, uh, throughout these presentations, um, uh, I like to uh, ask you to keep two questions in mind. One is, what role can you play in clean energy transitions as a Cambodian scholar? And the second question is, how will this information uh, help you to, have, uh, to make informed decisions as leaders of Cambodia? Uh, and I think this really sh question should be asked to anyone, especially to you guys, because 
you are going to be the leaders to, to be in this career path in the future. And there are a lot of decisions that you're going to make. And because you're going to make those decisions, so uh, when it's time to make those decisions, you should be informed uh, and decide whether you want to stay on sustainability path or the other way around. So I hope that you keep thinking and, 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 and keep these questions in mind as I go present uh, further. So uh, here's our agenda for today. Uh, uh, we'll start by talking what about what is clean energy, and then we'll touch upon uh, different sources of clean energy in Cambodia, and then uh, going to uh, what are the energy mix trends globally, regionally, and as well as in Cambodia, and also what are the progress Cambodia have been taking on to taking uh, in renewable energy, and uh, uh, last but not least, what are the key takeaways uh, from this presentation. And uh, uh, anyway, please feel free to leave any comments, questions in the chat box. Uh, Neil will be monitoring them as we go and I'm more than happy to answer them at the end of the uh, presentations. And if I'm going too fast or too slow, please let me know as well uh, in, the, in the chat. Uh, so a little bit about us, uh, what is uh, Energy Lab? So Energy Lab is an organization uh, an NGO that established to support the growth of clean energy market in Cambodia. And it's uh, uh, Energy Lab is thrives to have a global vision of, a, of, of 100 power by 100 clean energy. And we're here to foster and make that reality, uh, that vision is a reality. So we starting from this webinar to having entrepreneurship programs. If you go check us out at energylab.com, you will see all the program that we we, we are uh, uh, making and, 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 and doing. So uh, I'd like to start off by ask you and let me know, what do you think uh, clean energy is? And what are the words that come to your mind when you hear the word clean energy? So if you can leave your answer in the box then that would be wonderful. And I'll, I'll give you like a few, a few minutes to think about that. So what is clean energy? And what are the words that come to your mind when you, when you think about clean energy? So we have uh, Mong Siet Lam saying solar power. Okay, okay. good. Wind, wind power from Wong Ai. Okay. Those are uh, the answer that when I talk about clean energy is kind of associated with it. Oh, there's one more. What is it? Energy sources from nature, from surrounding, and okay. we can produce energy with no harm. No it's harm. Okay. Good. Yeah. So uh, I think those are all the answers. I think uh, these are the buzzword that we want you to associate with clean energy. Sustainable, uh, does not harm the environment, solar, wind energy, and it's also renewable, right? Because that's, that's clean energy. It's renewable, it's, it does not harm the environment, and, and it's sustainable for the earth. And yeah. Oops, sorry. Uh, but there's another question that we do get a lot from uh, giving the definition of clean energy is, is renewable energy always clean? Uh, so I want to encourage you to think about this question as well. Like, what do you think about that? And maybe you can have a chat in the, uh, in the chat box and, and let me know what you think about uh, it's, it's, it's renewable energy is always clean. Like hydro dam, uh, it's, it, it's renewable energy, but is it clean? Is it really clean? So uh, if you please kindly let me know, that would be great. Do we have anyone? Uh, not at the moment, maybe they're typing. Okay. Maybe you can elaborate a bit more on the uh, hydro dams in yeah. Khmer. <laughs> uh, hydro dam in Khmer, you unmute yourself. Okay, Khmer have video case in the young that took long to love top mouth, young being what I'm doing, top mouth took no convert from potential energy to electrical energy. But think about the constructions that comes around it, like uh, how does it take to build those dams, those big dams? 
and, and does it, how, how, how does it affect the society, the community who live, uh, people who lived around it? And how does it affect the water system, the water management, as well as the ecosystem in Cambodia? Actually, I guess give all the answers. Yeah, answer okay. <laughs> well, Chandigarh, not always, it's for example, like Rochelle. Mm -hmm. And so, exactly. uh, Chan will say, the materials that are involved in the production of solar panels or wind turbines might not be clean. Yeah, I think those are the answer too. Uh, it's called life cycle assessment. So we, if you look at the technologies, uh, it's in some way impact the environment, uh, impact the way we live in our society. So um, I like to, to, to give this to Hydrodance. I think it's a kind of debatable topic, right? And I'm, I'm, I'm sure that a lot of you have heard already, like I mentioned, the hydropower. Is that really clean, right? So although it's a renewable sources, because we have endless cycle of water, but the, it's conflicting because hydro dams put a lot of damage to the environment, like I mentioned, like uh, the water environment and community neighbors who lived around it, uh, the fish and, uh, and all of that. And yes, uh, the answer is renewable energy isn't always clean. Uh, and it really depends on different kinds of technologies. And these are the questions we want you to ponder and ask when you read the magazine, if you read the articles and see all these projects that are being built uh, for, for to meet the electricity demand in the country. Like, is it really going to help Cambodia in one way or does it going to affect the Cambodia in another way? So really uh, think about it when you come across all of those topics and all of those projects that, that approved by Cambodian government. So uh, now entering into the forms of uh, clean energy sources, and I think a lot of you have might know already, uh, solar. Uh, we have solar panel, you've seen it on the rooftops, we have solar farms uh, that are connected to the national grids. And how it works is we have solar panels, we put it out uh, on the sun, uh, it's uh, convert the light uh, to electrical currents uh, or heat energy. And then the second one is wind. Energy. I don't know if you have seen the wind turbine before, but they're really huge. Uh, uh, or, uh, they're really huge, and um, this technology are really smart. And uh, in Cambodia, there's none yet, but uh, there's an exciting uh, uh, projects that are gonna uh, 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 coming soon. And I hope you guys uh, keep in touch with those projects, and, and and hope that you're really excited to see those projects come up because it's been uh, one of a kind. That because we have no wind power projects that are being done uh, before, but now we have, a, we have one that coming up soon. Um, so these turbines can, uh, uh, it's really smart, they are up in the sky spinning and they, they can actually uh, face the wind direction. So essentially we want to maximize uh, the spinning so that we can get the motor running and convert the, elect uh, the energy into uh, electricity that we use uh, uh, for our, our need. And the third one is hydropower, as I already uh, mentioned. Uh, young, uh, so they, they, they have the water and then convert the potential energy to electrical energy. And last but not least is bioenergy. One of the form of bioenergy. So uh, uh, now talking about the benefits of clean energy, right? Um, so a lot of time we think uh, uh, clean energy is really expensive, which is actually not, uh, because clean energy like solar itself, uh, itself is much cheaper now than ever at 0 0.38 cent uh, per kilowatt hour, if I remember correctly. And so yeah, the price is drastically dropped uh, in the last five to 10 years. And because of the technical, technological improvements, advancement that we have nowadays. And you know, the solar panels are more efficient than ever, as well as the wind turbines. So the cost of these projects are lowering than uh, making clean energy, more than uh, modern coal, modern uh, fossil fuels. Uh, and secondly, of course, it contributes to the growth of GDPs and local employments. So when you have a project, uh, uh, you need more workers, you need more uh, finance people, you need more accounting people who, and everything that come to the project. So thereby contribute to the growth of GDP. Um, and if we talk about the security, we would like uh, to take a step back and think about the, the electricity because electricity is so crucial to uh, every industry that's happening right now in anywhere in the world, the building, factories, anything at all really uh, need electricity. 
and it's contribute in the sense that if there's enough electricity, if we are self-sufficient, we are self-reliance and we are secure, then we don't want to import the electricity from other countries, let's say Thailand or Vietnam. Then it's perfect. It's, uh, it's contributed the, uh, to the economy. It's nourished the, the well-being of people who live in, this, uh, in, in anywhere in, in, in the world, if you say in Cambodia. So yeah, and otherwise it's, it's, it's of course, it's environmentally sound, it's sun, it's wind, it's available for us, uh, it's good for, for the environment, and it's free. So as long as you have the technology, the sun is always there, the wind is always there. Um, and uh, last, uh, finally, uh, it's faster to build. So for the coal project and fossil fuel projects, uh, excuse me, coal projects, takes a lot of time to build, takes a lot of time to study, and usually it takes from five to seven years to complete the projects. Uh, on the other hand, uh, solar, if you look at the product projects, it's only take five to seven months to build because really you just need to study where you get the most viable sun. Uh, sorry, it's uh, monitor the field and then you put the solar panel and you build it and there you go, a solar system for you. Um, as challenges of clean energy, of course, all things have challenges and Currently, it's really new, although clean energy isn't new to the world, but it's new to Cambodia. So Cambodia is really, really needs the time to build itself up, and it's also take time for the government to, to use it. Uh, and secondly is integration. Uh, clean energy has made advantage, but it's a represented change in a way that we approach energy from both supply side and demand side. So from the supply side, the grid operators need to find ways to bring new technology into the network. So renewable energy like wind and solar, they are dependent on weather and they uh, will produce a viable output throughout, uh, throughout the day and year. So this needs to be considered uh, for the grid operator to, to have grid operates efficiently and uh, uh, securely. But if you look at from the man side, what can we do to, to, to reduce this challenge, right? So like for you guys, you, you have the opportunity to consider our own role in this. One is to turn off the appliances off when you don't use it, right? And, and or use selecting a, a efficient way, a smart enable appliances that are consume less energy. So that's one way to, to, to look at these challenges. The third one is perceived cost. Uh, as I already mentioned, uh, it's, it's really hard to, because people think that it's still expensive, which is now it's not. So it's, we, we need to challenge them to, to think differently, uh, to give, uh, for us to give the right information that clean energy now is cheap than ever, cheaper than ever, uh, and we can actually secure it and use it uh, in an efficient way. We have a quick question, uh, Mom Pao Kun. Okay. They're wondering uh, on this perceived cost, uh, what kind of data backs up that uh, claim that clean energy is actually cheaper than let's say coal or fuel generated energy? Yeah, uh, good questions. Uh, yes, uh, I have a backup slide I will uh, <laughs> present you further, but uh, let me finish one and get back to your next questions. But thank you. Uh, uh, the last one, finally, policy. Policy takes time, right? Um, uh, you need to think about the policy maker, need to think about the uh, uh, investment cost, need to think about the operation, need to think what they get themselves into. And it takes a lot of time uh, and, and to do all these things up until they say, okay, now we can, uh, we want to implement these things, we want to implement these policies, whether we want to subsidize it, uh, whether uh, whatever they want to do to enable the growth of uh, energy in Cambodia. And like I said before, it takes a lot of time. Uh, and here uh, about the, the cost, uh, it's actually from the arena 2020 is really recent. Uh, so I hope this answers your questions. Uh, it's a really creative bit sauce. So they study on the cost of these uh, various uh, clean energy technologies. So if you look at the PV solar panel, uh, in 2010, uh, 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 it's, it's actually uh, the number that I said 0 0.38 cent kilowatt hour, but it's, uh, it's dropping uh, really low uh, uh, in, in this year, also in the, next, uh, in the next few years as well. And it's, it's going to continue to drop as well. So we really look at the potentials of the cost of this technology. 
And because of the cost of this reduction, cost reductions, uh, Bloomberg New Energy Finance have predicted uh, the uh, global uh, electricity uh, generation mix that 20 up uh, to uh, 2050s, up to 39% of world uh, generational mix comes from uh, uh, wind, solar, as well as uh, come from renewable energy. Um, so like if I just want to point out that uh, before 2019, not barely, but the world is dominant by cold uh, sources. But now uh, up from 2019, we see a lot of more uh, wind, more solar. And it means, and what it means is that uh, a lot of projects, I'm oh, no, sorry, a lot of projects, a lot of uh, countries are committed to have uh, renewable company, uh, renewable energy for, uh, to meet their electricity demand for, um, sorry, electric demand for their countries. Uh, and if you look at the global trend versus Cambodian uh, mixed trends, um, so on my uh, right side I have global and on my left side I have Cambodia. Cambodia in 2018, we have 49% renewable. And as you may already know, uh, most of that come from, contributes from uh, hydro dam, uh, hydro power. Uh, and then can, and then globe is only 29%. Let's see what happened in 2030. Uh, unfortunately, Cambodia moved in two different directions. Only 26% come from renewables. So it's a double uh, reduce from 2018. Uh, and uh, the world is moving into uh, renewable directions. And if we look further to 2050, it's, uh, you already see that the world is moving to more renewable and for Cambodia, it's, it's, it's still a question mark and it's up to us, it's up to young leaders of Cambodia uh, to secure and to, to make a decision whether we want to, to, to have more coals or we want to have more renewables. So uh, looking at the regional clean energy progress in Southeast Asia, if you see Philippines, Indonesia, Vietnam, Thailand, uh, they have fixed uh, targets of what they want to move forward with clean energy. Uh, on the other hand, Cambodia, unfortunately, we don't have a fixed goal yet. And what does it mean to have a fixed target, not fixed target, but to have a target in, in energy? Uh, it means that you signal to the market, you signal to the policymakers, signal to developers to come in and invest and, and, and help uh, the economic growth in the country. So uh, this, countries are committing to renewable energy, clean energy, and we are still deciding whether we want to take on that route or not. And uh, even though we are still working on uh, some of the uh, renewable uh, plans and everything, uh, Cambodians are looking good on uh, some of the project that's being approved by the government. And what we have here is uh, all the solar farm projects that are approved, I already mentioned, connected to the national grids. Uh, if you look at Kampong Chinang, we have uh, uh, 60 megawatt projects uh, coming up soon. Uh, we have projects in Madiminche and the one that I mentioned in Boko Mountain wind farm, 80 megawatt, still uh, wait for the government to, to, to uh, approve. So uh, uh, I hope, uh, yeah. So it's a terrific progress really for this new projects of solar energy that come for Cambodia. And it's, sorry, it provides like a, a lot of opportunities and it's really positioned Cambodia in, in a good position in, to be a leader in clean energy. Um, yeah. Uh, I just wanna touch upon a little bit uh, in terms of the power sector structure. Uh, for that you be looking at here that I want you to keep an eye on is uh, EAC, Anyato uh, Apsarang. Uh, Ministry of Mines and Energy, Ministry of Economics and Finance. High structure, in theory, EAC is a regulator. Ministry of Mines and MEF is the owner of EDC. Ministry of Mines and Energy is the player role of the policy maker. EDC is the only one that is in the world. They are doing all those uh, uh, works. Uh, yeah. Looking at the companies uh, of clean energies in Cambodia, they provide, uh, there's a lot of companies that come uh, invest and, and they're providing service in clean energy, uh, constructing solar farms. 
So one of one of that you might familiar is Total Solana. Got uh, one of the service they do now. Got install Solana. Like, uh, like so uh, yeah. Uh, so all of this company doing uh, really great works and uh, promoting the clean energy services and uh, constructions. And here's are more of the companies in, in Cambodia. The Blue Circle. I just want to point out they uh, they one of the the company are doing wind projects in Cambodia. Um, and not just the companies, right? There's uh, development partners also who come together to support clean energy in Cambodia. We have investing, we have three eyes. We have Asian development banks, we have AFD, we have also an embassy. Uh, all these development partners willing to help uh, Cambodia to move forward with energy and do, they have been doing incredible uh, works to, towards that. Last but not least, not just the women partners, not just the companies, but also brand, big brand around the globe, like H&M, uh, recently in Cam uh, who's also located in Cambodia. We have, uh, oh, I forgot the <laughs> coffee brand, <laughs> what is it? Uh, Starbucks, <laughs> Eon. Uh, so these are companies that are committed, they call it RE100, and got committed to uh, uh, to have uh, 100 renewable energy by certain years. I think uh, this is a perfect place to jump in, because there's a question surrounding something similar from Jason, who asked, what are the government's response to Cambodia going in the opposite direction than the rest of the world in terms of clean energy transition? And what are the implications of this? That's a really good question, Owen. Uh, so as of now, what they're trying to do is uh, uh, governments and uh, development partners trying to do a, a renewal, it's called renewable plan to look at uh, uh, how much renewable they can take on to the national grid. So right now they're still working on to find some answers for, for our future. So um, uh, at least they're doing some work to improve uh, around that. And uh, the implications of not moving in different direction is uh, these companies, like one of the result is one of these company gonna pack their bags and leave Cambodia. So uh, uh, it means we're gonna lose uh, jobs, uh, our economics are gonna loosen a little bit and the COVID-19, so uh, I, I assume you might know what's gonna be a aftermath uh, about that. And here I have a questions for you. Uh, Again, what role, after you hear all of this, so what role can you play as a Cambodian scholar in Cambodian clean energy transitions? So we have a link here, and if you can uh, uh, copy the link and, 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 and go to the site and answer the questions, that would be great. I'll give you a couple minutes to do that. Okay. So um, the link has been sent on chat. So please go ahead and uh, we will be presenting your answers. Screen's still on. I'm wondering if everyone has received uh, the link to the mentee. Amazing. Okay. Feel free to also have the discussion in the chat uh, if you want, if you don't want to head over. And also I have a little questions uh, along the ways too, like uh, what do you think uh, economists can contribute 
to uh, making more renewable for Cambodia? Just a little fun questions, just some lists and thoughts and... <laughs> Amazing, so thanks Malcolm. We have answers coming in. It's uh, educating others. I guess uh, some other people also answered, you know, clean, more clean energy projects and changing individual behaviors. Being aware, using it where it is possible. Yeah. I'm wondering, I, I guess not all of you are specifically engineers or in the energy industry as a technical people. So maybe you can think about as economists or, uh, I don't know, social, uh, social, uh, how, do you, how do you call it? Like people in the social development sectors or even public policy makers, future public policy makers, what role you can play as Cambodian scholars and future leaders uh, in the country? Yeah. And how about doing research? Do you think it might contribute some way to, to, to this? So perhaps I'm going to call it Monsilan. Monsilan is a um, global policy major in Stanford. And I was wondering, Monsilan, what you think about this, your role in the future, perhaps, in the clean energy. <laughs> Thank you, Fokun. Um, first, I just want to introduce myself a bit. As Niet said, I'm um, Silblan, the co-founder of GAX, and I am a master's student at Stanford, uh, majoring in international policy. And I'm so excited to hear about this topic. Um, like in the policy world, what we've been discussing in terms of um, energy is, you know, in terms of regulations, I can talk an example here in California, for example, because the water is limited, like you can pass on like regulations to limit the amount of water used. So in Cambodia, there can be uh, regulations like um, limiting, um, you know the, the 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 type of energies that businesses can use or the amount of water that they can take from underground oh so, yeah it's it's all relevant thank you Monsilan. very uh, interesting viewpoints wonder if anyone else uh, wants to add in this conversation if if not that's okay too we're always happy to have this conversation so please feel free to reach out to Wong Pokun, our clean energy advocate we're also happy to provide you any data if you ever do research in clean energy in Cambodia, whether it's on economics or policies or the technical side. So thank you. Mawakun, over to you. Yeah, actually, I just want to touch upon real quick on uh, some of the projects in Cambodia, uh, the solar project. So if you look at the first solar farm projects, um, sorry to jump a little bit back to the solar farm, because I think it's really exciting to, to talk about solar because we want to see it in record progress, right? So the first solar farm project was uh, actually 9.2 cent per kilowatt hour in 2017. And the second solar farm was 7.6 cent uh, kilowatt in Kampung Spu, uh, reducing costs, as you can, uh, you can tell. And the latest solar farms auctions, uh, can anyone guess how much uh, was the auctions? Uh, how much does it cost? If, uh, as I present before, like the cost is, uh, is reducing uh, in the last 10 years and, and continue to reduce. So what do you think the last uh, latest solar auction is, 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 is cost? You can have a, 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 an answer in the chat box and me all uh, happy to look over them. I think people are typing. Okay. okay. All right, no, no ideas just yet. So maybe Mopokon, you can give hints. I think maybe people are not familiar ah. with this project. Uh, mm -hmm. Yeah, and no worry, I just... Um, I just uh, give my answer. Um, so the last solar auction is actually 3.877 kilowatt hour in Pumpong Chinan. So that's the lowest cost 
that we achieved uh, so far in the solar options. Can you compare it to the price of the current? Uh, the coal project? Yeah. I think it's around seven to eight cents per kilowatt hour. So almost half. Yeah, almost half. Amazing. I'd like to share. And just really quickly to Van No, Lok Van No, who's asked for us to share this content. Um, yes, we're, we're happy to, so we get in touch uh, later on as well. And I just wanted to take, draw attention back to Menti, where answers are coming in back again. It seems that our scholars are interested in, you know, playing key roles in creating innovation from the tech side, creating policies, drawing more investments, which is very interesting. So I... It makes me very hopeful to see economists and policymakers and engineers uh, in the future, hopefully helping us in, in this sector in Cambodia. So it's really good to see. And I hope we continue to have these conversations, not only on clean energy, but on other aspects as well. Amazing. So, uh, well, Pakon, do you have anything else before we close? Uh, no, I think I'm going to use that. Oh, yes. I think it's been great so far. Um, everybody is so engaging in this conversation and seems that you guys are really interested in learning about clean energy. And as I said, if you would like to learn more, you can reach out to me and ask any questions relating to clean energy. And yeah. So Mozilla, Mai, any last words from, from you guys? No, uh, I think just, uh, this is really helpful. I'm not, uh, like an energy person, so I'm more of uh, social development. But I think this is really helpful to actually seeing that how interdisciplinary can uh, policy making in terms of uh, implementing renewable energies. And uh, yeah, and then I would like to congratulate to Bong uh, Kun and then also uh, Niet for hosting this amazing webinar. And I'm sure that all our attendees are also going to learn a lot. And then hopefully we'll take something out from this presentation to to act in the future. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much then. Thank you, Mosilan. Yeah, thank you so much, uh, Pakun, for such a comprehensive presentation. I really enjoyed learning about, you know, clean energy in Cambodia and where Cambodia is in comparison to the world. Uh, just like I, I Yunnan, I'm really, um, I'm really grateful for us to be in this moment all together, learning about clean energy and start thinking about what can we do as policymakers and mm -hmm. as um, Cambodian scholars. Some of the things I can think of now is, you know, policies makers can encourage more projects in terms of clean energy by and by lowering, you know, tariff of imports of, you know, the materials that go into, um, building all of these uh, solar powers and uh, wind turbines. Uh, there are other, and, and also maybe give subsidize to people who, to businesses like give tax breaks or you know, tax favor for businesses that use clean energy. Um, overall, it really sparks my uh, curiosity more into this sector. So thank you very much. Amazing. Thank you, Monsilan. And thank you to everyone uh, from the Global Cambodian Scholars, as well as the Chinese and Korean uh, Student Association of Cambodian Scholars. We're very happy to have you and look forward to other collaborations as well. With that said, thank you so much, Jim uh, and Akun. Bye, everyone. I just presented to you. Thank you. And before anyone goes, I can you just have one? Yeah. <laughs> Please don't forget to check out our Clean Energy Big websites and learn more about clean energy as well as the events that, that will be happening uh, in the next few weeks. And hope you enjoy your day and thank you so much for joining us. And yeah, give me a player.